What's good, world? It's your boy Dre at Samurai Kennel. It is Monday, October the 9th, 2023. It is Indigenous Peoples Day, also still known to some as Columbus Day. And uh, this is an impromptu. I don't go live on Mondays typically, but uh, as y'all, as some of y'all may know, some of y'all may not know, I get up in the mornings on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I have a routine. On my off days, though, I still keep the dogs in their routine. I still wake them up, walk them, exercise them, feed them, and let them out use the bathroom. And then, uh, and then I start my day. Now, typically, I would go to the gym immediately following walking the dogs. But um, my family decided they want to go to the gym today. My son wants to hoop. My wife wants to take the babies out to the to the. Uh, I think it was called a much game and we really enjoy it, you know. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. Supreme, top of the morning, bro. Top of the morning. Go ahead and grab that coffee, big bro. Yes, sir. And welcome to the chat. Supreme, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna just be cooking a little bit today, man. You know what I'm saying? Just cooking a little bit and uh letting everybody uh know my thoughts on something that I've seen to Belgium. And um they say if something worries you, speak on it. You know, if something worries you, speak on it. Uh, what better place to do that would be with the people who I hold in closest counsel, which is the Shogun Army. Um, so I want to tell a story, and this story is, is a personal story, but it needs to be. I have to tell it so people understand my perspective on what what I see happening right now on this YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, this social media stuff, man. Like. Social media is not it's new, but the concepts are old. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning. This social media stuff is new, but the concepts are old. And the name of the topic today is second and third order effects. I'm also going to share the if I can find, I'm gonna share the hyperlink here because I don't mind chopping it up with y'all this morning. I, I like there's no there's no objective behind this show other than something was worrying me and I wanted to speak on it, and that that's it, man. And so uh, with the second and third order effects, I want to tell a story before I like open it up for anybody to jump in if they want to. It's not required at all, you know. Um, this is just uh, me me doing something on a uh, short notice, and. Uh, so the story starts like this. Uh, a couple months before I joined the military, um, I was in I was in the streets heavy, man. You know, uh, and I wasn't I was like ace boogie from paid and four. I've always been that personality type. Like um, I was never flashy, uh, but I, I led a team, you know, so I, I had a street team and uh, it can't be confirmed or not. I never got caught. I never told anybody I never got caught. You know what I'm saying? Um, the only place you would ever find my information would be on what on the Blaine County Sheriff's Department, uh, gang related gang related individuals of uh, of concern. You know they had a little chart of who they thought was in gangs, but they you know uh, they don't have anything. And anyways, so what ended up happening was a guy I was dealing with my homie. Uh, we was at my grandmother's house, and he had a beef. And one of the guys that he had beef with showed up at a cookout we was at. And you know, and uh, the homie, the homie showed his true colors that day because he brought a beef to my family, which we don't beef with nobody. We don't, we don't get involved in that. And he had a he had a pistol on, him. so he tosses the pistol and the, and he takes the magazine out of the pistol, and tosses it like he gonna square up with the guy. Well, the guy pulls out a box cutter and you know, so I'm like, you know, like. Like, give me the pistol. I'm up on him. This is my grandmother's house. He's here. I know he's a convicted felon. I know him. He's from, from around the way. Like, I know he has intent to, 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 to off somebody or hurt somebody. And, uh, but this is what was explained to me after the fact. You know, so he has, this this individual and his brothers are all about that life. Really about that life. Like, I was acting out of emotion. You know, and yeah, what I was, I don't think I was wrong, but his family was really about that life. So if I had been given the opportunity to off him that day, right, he has brothers, multiple brothers 
that all are about that action. And, it, and one of the brothers ended up going to prison for shooting the other brother. And so that's what I want to talk about with y'all today is second and third order effects. Just because I would have got a small victory in that moment, even if I got locked up for, for doing that, those guys weren't going to stop. If they couldn't get me, they was going to try to get somebody in the family. Okay? And this is the world we live in. So when we're making decisions, you can't just make a decision based upon how it affects you. If you're, unless you're a solo person, you know, unless you're a solo individual, you cannot make decisions based upon just how it affects you. You know, before I had kids, before I had a wife, when I ate, my family was fed. But now, when I go to the grocery store, I have to buy food with the intent that everybody who I'm responsible to and for can eat. When I purchase a home, I have to purchase, you know, before I could stay in, in apartments, I used to lay up with girls. There was times where I didn't even have a house. I was just dealing with enough girls that I could bounce from house to house with them. You know what I'm saying? And that was cool, you know. But there's second and third order effects to that. Those years I spent living with girls and, and tricking off, you know, um, I wasn't building any equity in a home. That's the second and third order effects of not having something sustainable. And so um, I say that because, and what I'm getting at, my my little angle, because everybody says you got an angle. This is true, but I'll tell you what my angle is. As I see things brewing on this digit on this digital platform, YouTube, I see beefs happen, and in these beefs. All right, everybody's aware of the Biggie and Pac stuff. And, and literally, when I look at social media, I look at it like this is the new rap game. Everybody trying to get in, you know, over here, to, you know, back in the day, it was hip hop. You know, the East Coast making noise, the West Coast making noise. You know, we had a come up session where everybody was, where it was, where it was, where it was booming. And then, you know, and then we had the East Coast, West Coast people, people lost their lives over it. And that's what I'm trying to appeal to right now. I want to make it known that that's where I see this going. You know, it's it's all fun and games right now, but some of the stuff that these grown men are saying to each other is it's beyond you can't take it back. It's there, it's on the internet forever. You know what I'm saying? And depending on who you say it to, uh, all of us got following, you know, uh, all of us have zealots. You might even as an internet personality, I'm on the screen all the time. But I get inboxes from people that's like, you want me to handle that? No. Nah. No. Because the second and third order effect is now I'm a shot call. If you look at it like I'm a kingpin thing, even though I'm a square bear, uh, if I condone somebody reaching out and touching somebody else, that's kingpin violations. A Supreme excellence, that's that's hundred percent accurate, my brother. That's hundred percent accurate. And and my thing is we're not gonna stop it by talking about it. We're not gonna stop it. It's it's gonna happen. It, the, the, the wheels are in motion. The wheels are in motion. And you can't on this internet thing, you can't decipher the real from the those who do it for cloud. Now, mind you, I I don't want <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. If, if somebody's beefing on the internet for clout, then that's an MO, and they're going to continue to do it because it makes money. It makes money. And there's not a lot you can do to stop people from doing what people do. You just can't. So as far as we go, I, just wanted, I want to make some public service announcements for my following. I can't speak for anybody but me. And for people who follow my channel or who, who rock with me the long way, just know that that Dre doesn't support or condone violence unless it's necessary. That's the whole that's the whole Shogun Army way. Like you know, what I'm saying like you know, defend those who can't defend themselves, defend those who you love, uh, be a true masculine man, and you know, when when the time comes that you have to show uh, force, show it. With more force than anybody, be as fearsome as you possibly can when you show for it, you know. And that's 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 that. I'm putting some something on the screen for y'all. I know y'all ain't trying to look at my face all day, you know. Uh, this is yesterday's uh, yesterday's video, but um, 
yeah, man, it uh, some of this stuff, man, it, it's I see it going bad. What's good, Supreme? Welcome to the chat, bro. What's going on, bro? Hold on, let me get you. All right, you in here, bro? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's good, fam? Man, enjoying the morning, my day off. Hey, big facts, big facts. Yeah, bro. I seen a comment you posted just a second ago. He said, uh, you called it a few months ago and said everybody on YouTube was going to start bloodline banging. And it's worse than what I predicted. Yeah, that's very accurate. Man, yeah, I seen it when, um, before Pro and Game went off. Like, I used to wake up to Pro and Game. And he'd get me through work shifts. Yeah. And, yeah. I never seen, I never caught the episode when he brought going hard on. So when going hard came in, I just figured like they just had just like came through, and then um the stuff with Welch, and then I like Welch because I use his products and stuff. Yeah. Like so I was kind of mad when everybody started getting into it, and then I was like, I was expected, but then I was just like waiting on everybody to sweep it underneath the rug and continue. And that's that's the part I seem like we stuck on. A lot of people can't. Sweep it under the rug. Just not mess with who you're not gonna mess with, and just keep going. You don't gotta disrupt somebody's because somebody might be trying to get a message through, and here you come in the chats with somebody else. And I don't be liking it. Yeah, but you know what? And the thing, bro, is it sells. Like that drama sells, bro. And I get it. I swear to God, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But it's uh, it. Based on what we're dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're dealing with guns, dogs, or even like legal marijuana, like uh, your content has to be very, very, because like the, like it's still on the rocks. You know what I'm saying? All these stops, like they're trying to get rid of guns. They're trying to get rid of dogs. They're trying to, you know, they're making it hard to sell to get legal marijuana in certain places, right? So with any of these topics, if you're not going to be like A1 about your shit, man, it's very difficult, you know what I'm saying, for the people who like, who see the third or effect. Cause like right now I, I got the dog on the screen doing bite work right now a lot of people be like pit bulls shouldn't do bite work and i agree with them if they don't know what they're doing a lot of people shouldn't own guns but they do you know what i mean like you know if you feel me that's not dog is done that's right yeah, that's like yeah yeah and so uh which one which one is the lighter cream color because i see they came that cream color that's my favorite color if it ain't yeah. black so uh so actually, Saki and Kazi are Saki's lighter. Ka Kazi's a little darker. She got a darker stripe down her back or whatever. And um, right. but all my dogs are in, the, in a, eventually being a uh, old yellow dog. And it's a, and I don't know if you peep this or whatever, but I got rid of the name Game Dog. I mean, I don't typically even call my dogs American Pit Bull Terriers. They are, you know, they they ADBA BFKC registered. But mm. it's so much. It's so much. People fighting over the term. You know, like we lost the term. We did. Yeah, we did. We lost the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm like, okay, these will be old yellow dogs. Like, if you know, you know. You know, if you know, you know. Um, right. But right now, we we these dogs have been misidentified. It's two second and third order effects. There are so many people who have unregistered dogs that are misidentified. You'll never clean up the mess. That's why I'm like, okay, you know, like. That's why I'm just trying to move into my own lane. You know, in 10 years, old yellow dogs will be their own offshoot. You know, uh, the Staffordshire, the Staffordshire Terrier started the same way. You know what I'm saying? They, they brought it for show. I'm breeding mine for go. But mine is just for go for a different purpose. What What's legal at the time. Right. Uh, <laughs> student flight, life, welcome to the chat. I, I, I consider my dogs emotional support animals. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, yeah, you're right. We lost the, the the term. The pit bull term is just out the window. It, it's to the point where like you can't. You would like to correct somebody, but then it's like they could go on their phone and type in pit bull in Google, and a blue dog will pop up, and it's like, yeah, oh, I don't even want to do it no more, man. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Facts. But yeah, I love uh, your dogs, bro. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, that's my happy dog, man. You can tell they love, they love their owner. And so I don't know if I ever told y'all the story about the uh about the <laughs> that was probably like 
13, 14, I had a, a little backyard bread dog named Misha. And um, with Misha, she, uh, that's my gamer tag right there. If y'all get on the stick, I'm getting on the sticks when I get off this live. Uh, my family probably not gonna get it like nine or 10 o'clock my time, but it's, it's 536 here in Tucson. But, um, oh, let me, let me blow it up real quick, man. Cause that's, that's a good looking dog right there, man. Hey, and we, you know, we, we love black dogs over here, bro. Like, this is my brother, Big A. Beautiful dog, yeah. man. Look at your, look at the, the skin, the fur, man. It's very clean, bro. Right here. Yeah, that's a happy dog, bro. That's a happy dog. And you know, it's people that hate. It's people that hate on the fact that you got a happy dog. The dog should be angry all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the Cat Williams skit. He said, you want to bang on bacon? <laughs> no, man. It's a different world, man. Like, like uh, I, I used to stay in Memphis. You know, yeah. In the hood. And now I'm in the burbs and I don't know the state. And it's like really about blending in. You don't want no angry dogs causing attention. Uh, it's, it's, I, I really, I, I'm preaching to blend in. You got to blend in with society nowadays. That's the only way you're going to keep the dogs. That's facts, bro. And what's even crazier that you mentioned that is, um, okay, so futuristically, like you don't want to, I don't personally want beef with the Karens and the people who, the next door neighbors that call animal control. I had those neighbors. I had those for like I had in Tucson. And I thought I was going to have one of those problems here, but the doghouse has eliminated, alleviated a lot of that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like having this little doghouse set up is, is kind of nice, right? But um, there are Karens that you ever seen that movie, The Blind Side, where like you know she basically kidnaps the, the, the dude to make a play football for or whatever, you know. But anyways, um, on the blind side, you know it, it, that Karen. I'm, 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 I'm gonna let you back in, bro. I don't know what happened. But the Karens, they uh, they advocate and they, you know, they they they're letter writers. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of the other channels are offensive to them, you know, and mm -hmm. if you look at Peter's overarching mission, and I learned this in a, in a sociology class I was taking, Peter's mission is not to take American pit bull terriers. It's to take all dogs. They believe that no animal should be a pet. For so, real? Yes. Go look at their mission statement on, on their homepage. And so when people be like, you know, these, these people do this, I'm like, we're all in the same boat to them. Now, the cool thing is, if they divide us, they go, okay, we get rid of pit bull people. They're the tough, they're the tough ones. They're the Spartans. The pit bull breeders and people, they're, they're the Spartans. They're, they're going to be the tough ones to beat. We can't take their dogs by force. We got to take those by legislation. Okay, we get them out the way. Now, the golden retriever guys and the, you know what I'm saying, the people who use water dogs and dog diving and stuff, they don't want to see those dogs doing that either. They feel like that's forced labor as well. And so, you get us out the way. The most of the community that deals with Labrador retrievers and so they're not gonna retaliate. They're gonna right. just let they're gonna just follow suit. Well, it was fun while we had it, guys. You know, you know, that's 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 the typical, and that's not everybody. I don't like talking in definitives because it's some it's some lab guys that'll blow your face off and trying to take their dogs. You know what I'm saying? But the general the general populace that owns those type of dogs are less combative than the kind of people that own American pit bull terriers. Right. So that's why you levy this breeder specific legislation because you got you got the, you got them. Uh, I hate to say it, but you got them slaves that won't stay on the plantation without without the gun line. You know what I'm saying? That is, and that's not a race thing. That's the that's the personality thing with the, with the American people. Yeah, yeah, you it know, is. the the dog the dog represents uh, the fight, and the and the people who own it love the idea of not dog fighting, but a person that, of anything that will stand its ground. So they do it part with his life. You know what I mean? Uh, that's why I like the dog so much. And that's why I can't. I want, I wanted to do protection work with Malin Wise. I really did. But them dogs were unstable as hell, and I didn't trust them around my kids. Man, you know what? I I, I kind of felt that. I I never nobody never told me that like that. But the where I got faith from, I got faith from uh out of Missouri. Yeah, and the guy, the guy who had her, he had. We, it's in the middle of nowhere, I swear to God, middle of nowhere, Missouri. And he had 
a a, a line candle, like a, like a straight line candle of all Malawas on the right hand side. And yeah. then he had all the hang dogs on this side. And I'm looking at the Malawas and, and I'm looking at the pit bulls. I'm looking at the Malawas, I'm looking at the pit bulls. The Malawas is going crazy. Them was <laughs> going crazy. Yeah. The pit bulls, they chilling. I'm like, what's up with the Malawas? He's like, man, it's a two year wait. I'm like, why a two year wait? He like, man, I gotta turn. He like, I gotta calm him down and I gotta train him before I let you just yeah. get in somebody. So I was like, damn. So yeah, I I I'd rather do it with the pit bull too. I won't lie. Like when I breathe, hey, uh, my girl, she get to pick the boy, name the boy. We doing all the training, the bite work, protection work. We doing everything. Yeah, man. It's it's a brother. Uh, we do it all TV. He does he does the same stuff I do. And it's the thing, man. Like um. I don't feel like I'm special. Enough. Like I think some people think I got like a, like a complex, but I don't, bro. Uh, and also, shout out to Brother Cannon G, man. Uh, big shout out to you, Cannon G. Cannon G is another knowledgeable dog, man, bro. Um, shout out to Salute. A lot of brothers, like, this is the thing. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to say a name. I have to say names. I don't I don't talk bad about nobody, but I got to get the example. I believe that Triple J is doing something noble with raising that money to get uh, uh, lawyers to help fight for people who are not doing anything wrong, right? But this is the thing, right. and people don't realize this. Life is about life is a popularity contest, whether you want it to be or not. And if, if you think I'm lying, the, the person who wins who sits in the White House wins from a popularity contest. Yeah, yeah, you're not lying. It's, it is a big ass okay. We pick we we did a popularity contest to pick who could vote for us in the electoral college. And then they do a popularity contest of who they fuck with the hardest out of the choices they got. It's a popularity contest, whether it's re- whether you call it a republic or de- democracy. Right. Hey, so, uh, but I'm about to get in Triple J ass through the life. Like, so hold on, hold on. This is what I want to tell Triple J. And, I, and he he just posted a video yesterday. Triple J and a lot of these older cats, I, I, I respect all the OGs. They come on my channel, y'all see them. We don't have no beef. And when I talk to them, it's all love, it's all respect. But I have to educate them on some things that they don't understand, because I'm a, I was a drill sergeant for four years, right? And so when I got there, the, the first thing they said was the way the drill sergeants drill sergeants. I used to, I used to would have been able to back in the early '90s, early 2000s, punch a recruit in the face, right? Okay. That got that got brought to light in 2012. So the way we train changed, and then what they realized was, all right, cool, like. These kids nowadays they shut down when you uh, when you talk to them a certain way. They're literally doing a study right now where they're doing where we don't yell at them for the first week that they're at recruit training, so they can actually learn their environment. Because I promise, you, if you go to a new hood and every day it's a shootout, the first day in that hood, you're not really getting a, a real sense for what that hood is about. Correct. Yeah, you're gonna be you know what I'm saying? Out. Yeah, you, you're not you're not gonna be, become an active member of the community, and so. Mind you, I think it's do I what I personally think about it. I think it's soft as hell, personally. But I was raised, I was raised by my grandparents. That's old school. But the majority, the majority were raised by social media. And so even when it comes to sports, it's six basketball courts in my neighborhood here in Tucson, right? We had one where I'm from. And the them folks around my town. We would congregate so much on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon that some some weeks they were like, we can't deal with this shit right now. We're going to take the goals down. You know what I'm saying? So we would have our little scout go out to the court and see if the goals was even up because we was going we was going to rock that court. You know what I'm saying? We and, and it, 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 The court brought a lot, of, a lot of stuff. It brought a lot of drama, a lot of fights and stuff. But, like, at the end of the day, like, if you if I can just get a run, all the little the, like, local girls was there, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to be on the court. I drive by these courts in my neighborhood every day going to work, every weekend when I'm going out, and I never see kids on the courts at all. At all. I'm like, bro, I would have killed six different courts. Bro, we would have had a team for every street. Six different courts? Yeah, Yeah. we'd have been out there. I'm talking about, right, like, even if it was like 50 degrees outside, we're going to be out there hooping. Exactly. And so... This is what I got to talk to Triple J about is his delivery. You know what I'm saying? Uh, his delivery is, I get the message. I do. I swear I get it. It's a beautiful message. 
But when you're talking to the Karens, the, the, people, the people who actually trying to go against you, they got the same objective, but they don't like you. And people, unless you're a strong person with a strong constitution, like, okay, you can tell me, like, Dre, you shouldn't go out there and shoot this dude in the face, bro. Like, you don't have any ground to stand on. Like, you're going to jail if you shoot him in the face. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I don't fuck with you, so I'm not listening to the shit you say, even if it's going to save me. Right. That's the mentality. Uh, What's up? You think if Tricky J put it in somebody else's hands, like, you know, if he still was, you know, funding it for the lawyers, but he put a different face on it, that the Karens wouldn't recognize, you think that it'll, it'll be a little smoother? Cause nah. They, 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 they don't like him. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's his movement. It, it's, it, so he says things like retarded. Okay, like, I say the word retarded around people I know. If you know this or not, like that R word growing up, you're like, that shit retarded, man. Get the fuck out of here. You can't say that now in public. That you know, yeah, mentally you. mentally challenged or handicapped is 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 what you gotta say now, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's terms that we use, even our age group, there's terms we use that ain't cool no more. Not if you want to be public. Yeah, you can't say a lot of shit nowadays. You're right. It's a it's a you got you got to put a filter on, or you'll get yeah. you'll get a trim. And because of that, bro, like that's not like it's not not the bad thing at all. Because you know, like I, I watch his channel, I I'm some of those likes. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, bro, he's these people are just stupid. They're just dumb. You know, I'm like, bro, like you're you're not putting a stamp on it. So if with most people, if you say anything that that, 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 uh, that deals with them, even if it's a small portion that dealing with them, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, okay, let's say like, okay, you don't fight dogs, but you keep your dogs on the chain, right? Okay, and you go, all these dog fighters with their dogs on the chain. Now you didn't just attack dog fighters, but if I'm a person with my dog on the chain and I'm not listening to what, to what you're trying to say and I take you at face value, you just offended me too. Right, right. And right. so when you yeah. shotgun statements out like he does, I'm like, bro, like you're catching a wide variety of people, you know, um a wide variety of people. That, that's, that's yeah. 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 You think he, he probably just need like a little cultural response class, you know. But at the same time, so I was talking to my cousin uh Pencil over since to be on this channel, and he he's a cable guy, right? That's one of his right. one of his uh jobs he does. And he was like him and some of the older dudes in cable. They like now they want to go to uh, from from uh, Ethernet and stuff like that to like the uh, fiber wire or whatever or coaxial cable. And he was like, man, we too old to learn something new. Like legitimately, like it's been working so long. Why would I want to? And I, and I can't blame him. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? I respect, it. but to an extent, Danny Brown, I respect. It. I, I really right. wish and hope for a change, but that change may never come. Yeah. I mean, man, how old is Triple J? Old enough, old enough that he don't, he shouldn't have to change who he is. Yeah. Like there's to be, there be grandfather laws for people like him. No bullshit. Like if you're over age, I think there should be grandfather laws for people like that. Like if you're over sixty, like how much time do you really have? Left? This is no offense, like I'm not trying to put nobody in the ground, but like if you're over sixty years old. How much time do you really have left? Even the prison system has a certain age where they're like, you know what? This person's not really a threat to society. You know what I mean? Like, like it's costing us more money to keep them here. Ray, you know what I'm saying? Ray, Ray Claude. Yeah. It's it's costing um, more money to keep Ray Claude. Well, with the with what with, with a dog man, with the grandpa law, <clears throat> I'm I'm gonna assume that the dogs kept them young and they're gonna live an extra couple years just because they were doing all the work with dogs yeah uh but it's like man 65 no i will say 65 because what i heard pbk said what uh what did he say walk them off which one he said is still alive and they they do like 10 miles a day jogging or running or something yeah i forgot what he say, but i don't know man he, he, you know that you get older you get stuck in your ways and they just he not gonna change with the time so i mean i love him though I, I man i love them videos yeah what do you what do you yeah. got turtle muscle dogs yeah so he, he has he has other stuff too but that, that's it that's his uh 
that's the the, the meat and potatoes of his stock. Yes. Yeah, I think I might have had a turbo bus dog a long time ago. So, so where I'm from, uh, that's the bloodline that not a lot of black dudes had. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and this is like I have to, I have to. I hate the fact that I have to get disclaimers, but I get disclaimers. <laughs> like, it's no race riots where I'm from, but yeah. all, the, all the brothers I know run Red Boy Jack. You know what I'm saying? That total buster. What was, they you, what was so, you originally from? I'm from a town called Bladenboro, North Carolina, bro. It's um okay. It's about 30 minutes from uh from like the South Carolina border. You know what I'm saying? Uh I'm not far from Wilmington, Vietnam. Um, you know, uh the area that I was most active in when I was active was an area called Robeson County, Lumberton, Saddle Tree, Red Springs, uh South Robson area, you know. Uh right. that area that area stick with a group of people called Lumbee. You know, and they had them, they they ran they ran different lines too. They ran a lot of cheap red, red boy rascal stuff. You know, right? Um, I'm blessed that grew up in an area in an estate where I was able to be exposed to it early on. So I understand why a person would want to be involved in even the game side of it. You know, the game testing side of it. it it's exciting as hell. You know, uh, but I look at it like. Um, if you get in a fight and you or if you start boxing somebody in the parking lot, even if y'all agree upon boxing in the parking lot, because it's not a sanctioned event, it's illegal, you know. But I still like fighting, I still watch regular boxing, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I look right. at the whole dog fighting thing personally. Like it's illegal. I'm not gonna do it. I don't want to go to jail. But it's not an immor- immor- immorality thing for me either. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I don't see it as immoral or I, I like I just don't. Um <laughs> It's, man, you, you got people who think that there's people out here like forcing these dogs to do it or beating them or killing them to do it. And then it's like, I, I try, I explain. Some people know, like, man, some of these puppies come out the wound scratching so they mama, like, ain't nobody making these dogs do this. Yeah. At all. But I feel you on that, man. So, so, so in your area, play, y'all had, in y'all area, most of black people ran real boy Jocko. Yeah, that was just what I knew. My my family, the, the people who introduced me to the dogs, that's what they had. So I had I had a kennel blindness, a bias from the age of as early as I can remember dealing with the dogs up until I was probably 19 before I like before I got my first dog that wasn't uh that wasn't you know if you're a real boy Jocko. Right. I, had a, I had a family member that lived across the street and he was good friends with Mr. Mims, rest in peace. You know, and I only I only spill on Mr. Mims right now, but as as my uh when, when my cousin passes, I gotta tell the stories. I can't tell y'all right now because like he'll kill me. And I I'll I give you a story about <laughs> I know I'm being serious, like I'm being dead serious. Like um so solo salute. Yeah, solo. What's hey, solo? I'm gonna put a link back in the chat again too. But um this this is a true story. I can't make this shit up. It, it, it made it made headlines. My cousin that I'm talking about, he um his wife had passed, and okay. after she passed, like before she passed, but before she before they got together, and after she got together, like like you know my cousin he was he was a playboy, you know what I'm saying, and so he started hitting the mayor's granddaughter, the mayor of my town, she, but the mayor lives across the streets. So like it's like my house. The mayor lives next to me, my cousin across the street. JT, what up? Link in the chat, bro. So my cousin was hitting the mayor granddaughter. You know what I'm saying? My cousin probably like, at the time, he probably like 50, 55, right? Somewhere in that range. And the mayor's grand, the mayor's granddaughter boyfriend went to school. He's my age. We graduated together, right? He decides he's going to go try to steal one of my cousin's dogs to get back at my cousin. So he kicks in the front door, and I guess he calls up on, on get his girl out of there and take a dog on the way. So my cousin put birdshot in his back, laid him Damn. down. Didn't kill him, but Damn. laid him down in the front yard. Okay, this popped up. Ass. Shot him in the back, like um, like uh, him, But when he like shot South him in the back, that's yeah. He caught him in the back. Oh shit! Yeah, Damn. just like on South Central, you know what I'm saying? Like this shit made headlines, all kind of shit. And so right. my cousin, my cousin, my, my cousin's son called me. He goes, "Yeah, man, I just had to build dad out." You know what I'm saying? Build him out the same night. Went to court, hey, 
And he had posted uh, no trespassing signs. Dude kicked in the door, showed intent to take uh, personal property. North Carolina has a castle law. This is a black man that shot a white dude in the back. And he's still free. Ooh. So when I tell you yeah. I fear this man, I fear this man because he understands when it when he understands what situation to do damage in. You feel me? So like right. uh, I, I got I got I've seen things, I got I got respect for him on another level. And when he passes his stories, it's fair game. You know what I'm saying? Like uh because it, it's some shit people need to know, you know what I'm saying? It's some shit people need to know. You can to write a book, you can have to write a book yeah. on cuz. So. Yeah, you know, um, because cuz I'll give you another example. Cuz told me about the Mike Vick shit before Mike Vick went down. I knew who Bad News Killers was when I was 14 years old. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I and it, it, go ahead. I ain't know no killers. I ain't know no killers growing up. I I I was it was it was my bulldog career started in I'm originally from Chicago. But I'm yeah. from Memphis too. My bulldog career ain't starting to Memphis as like as, as a little kid, and I ain't I man I didn't start hearing about kennels until 2015. Yeah, yeah. So man, so it was really where you from over there in North Carolina? That's really bulldog country over there. So it's it's meccas. So you know how you say you was in uh, in Shot Town, but you was also uh. You was also uh, what was that? What you say? Uh, Chicago and uh, Memphis. Memphis. Those are both like cities to me. You know what I'm saying? Like they like you hear about them. You know they they make noise. Both of them got famous people from it, right? So mm -hmm. in the bulldog world, where I started off in North Carolina, it was so saturated that I didn't care what was going on in the rest of America. I did. There was no reason to. You know what I'm saying? Mountain Man, Mr. Mims, uh, Marlowe. Yeah, uh, walk them all, which that name has always been weird to me. Like, where, the, like, can somebody tell me where walk them all got the name walk them all Kennedy or why he's calling really? himself walk them all? Oh, that wasn't his real like last name. No, oh, so, so being that I'm from there, I thought it offensive personally. Mm. And you know, ain't nobody else, I, I'm not, I'm not hating on them. Let, let, let this be a disclaimer. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Oh, JT, salute my brother JT, salute Melvin Brown, salute Mayhem. Solo, you already know, bro. If you want to get in here, bro, we will talk it up. But Supreme. So I want to explain this to all of y'all in the chat. Because, like, y'all got to understand how country I grew up and why, like, uh, why I talk about I do the things I do. I've just seen shit different. So Waccamaw is the name of an area in North Carolina where the Waccamaw Sioux Indian used to operate. Native American, indigenous people, indigenous people's day today. There's a place that I grew up from eight miles from me in North Carolina called Lake Walkamaw. So you got what we call the Buckhead Indians that, that hang out down there. I feel you so right. It's all good, brother. Thank you for chiming in. And so Lake Walkamaw is known to be an alligator infested lake. But the lake, it's, it's basically a bar. It ain't even a lake. It's just a big ass bar. Like you can walk across the entire lake without a boat. Like the highest the water gonna get unless it's been like heavy rain is uh, up to you like a chest, right? Now but it'd be alligators. And I used to go swimming in. No bullshit. Country ass boy. And so like my mom and them used to joke, you know, there's alligators and they walk them out, they be eating people dogs. That was the joke. Where I'm from, that's the joke, but it's the truth. And so you know right. like there's no way there's no way my parents would let me swim swimming in water with alligators, right? Bullshit. And like the whole community be out there. The whole community. And so uh Hurricane Floyd, no, Hurricane Fran hit in 1995, and it flooded some streets. And my uncle had a a, a Ford Ranger, a little a little Ford Ranger. We was just riding around like you know, we doing no nigga shit, being nosy, trying to see like what got damaged and shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so we riding around like assessing the damage, you know, being nosy. And uh, <laughs> no bullshit, swimming beside us on the truck was a gator as long as the truck. And that's what I'm like, yeah. yo, like. My family is crazy, B. Like, they indeed are crazy. Like, bro, we've been swimming in this water my whole life. And uh, it's got real gators in there. And then after that, they would have, like, reports, like, you know, like, a gator a gator caught up Lake Waccamaw into the town hall. So where I'm from, it's a blood area. They call it Barton, but the name of the town is called Clarkton. Okay? And so in Clarkton, every couple of years, you have a big gator. They would have to remove it from the city because it doesn't swim up 
into the city, you know what I'm saying? Or into the town, mm -hmm. part of the town. But um, yeah, man. So when I heard walk on my kennels, I'm like, oh shoot, somebody from where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Like they from where I'm from. And I found out they operated in Myrtle Beach. I'm like, you know, uh, but I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I swear I get it. You know, it, it's a good name, you know, but it, it's the Waccamaw Sioux Indians that uh that, that area is named after. And we call them, right. the buck, we call them Buckhead is what we call them. So like the first time I heard Buckhead from ATL, I was like, okay, they got Buckhead Indians down there too, but it's not like, it's not the same thing. That's a, that's a residency or a neighborhood down there, or, you know, uh, an area mm -hmm. in Atlanta. But when I say Buckhead, so the Buckhead Indians, uh, they're Stedman Graham is one of them. Okay, Oprah boyfriend is one of them. Stedman. Okay, Stedman. Yeah, so like Stedman came to like I can't make this shit up. Stedman came to my high school to talk to us about like you know like being successful. A lot of people don't know he was a, a, a pro basketball player before he met Oprah. She still, she still making him stay in the guest house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, man. Hey, you know she's a she's an alpha she's an alpha male female. You know what I'm saying? But hey, shout out to Oprah, man. But um. They haven't got hoes though. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, them Grams, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna, bro. If you ever been to North Carolina to the area I'm from, you 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 know what I'm talking about. Them Grams, the girls, they find in the month. I'm talking about they are beautiful. Like mulatto looking. It's that you know that because basically what it is is the same thing that happened with the Seminoles. You had African Americans and and indigenous African Americans and indigenous Native Americans all uh crossed up. So you got light skinned people with good hair. The whole everybody, the whole town, just light skinned people with good hair. And um, mm -hmm. so the girls, you know, when I hear names like Cromarty and you know what I'm saying, stuff like that from my area, I'm like, okay, that's Buckhead. You know, like like where I'm from, last names matter. Right. Last names matter. And so, you know, the Cromarties and stuff, and then uh and the Lumbees, that's the, that's the ultimate tribe. The Lumbees are their own offshoot of uh Wakamasu Indians. Now the Lumbees. They look like mulattoes. Like if you don't know their lumbies, you're gonna just think they're mulatto. And so, but they'll be like light skin with blue eyes, but but way like wavy hair. Some of the Dang. most beautiful women I ever seen. Lumbies. She was in the hell out. And uh, but but and they love they love brothers. But them lumbi dudes. Uh, I will give you an example. So we was leaving a football game. One of our homeboys, he's a white dude. One of my homeboys uh, that I used to go in the woods with a hunt shit, um, he pulled a lumbee chick, and they ain't like it. Now, there's a knife called a hawk bill. I don't know if y'all have seen a hawk bill knife before, but what it is, it's a recurve blade. Instead of the blade being on the, the side that you used to be on a knife, uh, it's on the inside, you know, like, like a hook. And then, uh, hold on a second. Let me check this out. So... Uh, Melvin Brown said, where this at, Dre? This is in uh, North Carolina, so southeastern North Carolina, Melvin. And Solo said, bad red, yeah, bad red bone looking lady, yes, sir. But so, oh, so, so, yeah, so Supreme, so um, they uh, they caught him at the football game and jumped him, and they hawk billed him. And you know how in New York they give you a buck fifty? They gave his brother yeah. three to four hundred stitches. They hit him in the side, and they took the muck, the, the muck and the meat out of, his, out of the back of his calf muscles. And, you know, we you know we found out about it. We run to the hospital, you know, and um, oh yeah, they, they they did him like back in the day. They yeah, they hawk built and um oh you know snap. so uh Damn. they 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 but they bought that life. Also, can't make this up. I was born in Southeastern Regional Hospital in Lumberton, but like that's how close I'm to Lumberton. Like when the emergency happened, even though there's a Bladen County Hospital. I live closer to right. Lumberton than I did to the Bladen County Hospital that I was born in. Now, okay, growing up, I did everything, all my all my stuff. Uh, you damn near killed him. Yes, sir. You know. So, growing up, I did all my stuff in in the Lumberton area, you know, and I learned the respect for that, area, you know, because they like it was nothing. Like the Lumbees, they they pretty much run their own stuff. The Oxendine, the Locklear. If you hear this name, Oxendine, Locklear, Hunt, that's Lumbee name. And like I said, like nowadays we're so amalgamated in, in our in our country that last names don't matter. But where I'm from, they fucking matter. Okay, you know, you catch yourself dating a hunt girl, you better know what the fuck you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Um, she that's gonna kinda, love you. That's kind of like, that's kind of like how it is in Detroit. I got I I got people in Detroit. That's kind of how it is in Detroit. 
Go ahead, spill on a little bit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got diarrhea in the mouth over here. So I will. My my dad's my dad's side of the family, they from Detroit. And uh they I, we grew up over there on on Vermont off Grand Boulevard. And I'm always meeting new cousins, new cousins, new cousins. And then yeah. and, and, and Michigan, the Greenwoods and the Bentleys. More so the Greenwoods. That's that's the last name of my people in, in Michigan. And I ain't no hell hell wait like that. that was my first time seeing like a last name whole weight when uh I think I might would have went out there in like maybe two thousand and nine or eight, meeting some cousins, and it was crazy. I had them all blue. I had like a Chicago, <laughs> uh, I had a Chicago White Sox fitted cap on. It was all blue. I had on some blue Chuck Taylors and some blue other stuff, but I just had it on because it was fresh. So my cousins were like, come on. So I hop in the car with them. We drive all the way to the West Side, Seven Mile Trinity. Man, yeah. everybody got on here. He liked it. And then I'm talking about, and these my cousins, two, two little short dudes. So I walk in the party in the house, and the, it's like the music stopping. Everybody look at me because I got on blue. Man, yeah. it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just, <laughs> so I'm like, man, what's going on? They're like, nah, you cuz, you family, ain't not gonna happen. Woo. So I'm like, damn. And then, you know, some other stuff happened. I ain't gonna speak on that, but. Yeah, I, I ain't never, I ain't never get to mess with my family out there with the bulldogs. I don't think none of my people got no bulldogs out there though. But I hear a lot of good stuff about them bulldogs out there. Yeah, man, it's um, that's big, that's big. And Jeff, welcome to the chat. So, uh, brother Jeff, you you're familiar with the Hawkville knife as well. I'm telling you, bro, it's it's something different, and and because it's recurve, it just, it's slightly different. Uh, Supreme though, that was crazy. Like wearing them colors, I I didn't learn about colors until like. High school, we learned about it from TV movies. Like where I'm from, uh oh, all love, Jeff, all love, bro. Hey, and on yeah. the screen, Supreme, I, I'm I'm playing. See that right at the state park, like walk them on. Like I don't want, yeah. Girl, this shit is this is what it looked like, but you can walk all the way across here, like into the horizon. And it was crazy. Is there's a restaurant there? They got some of the best. I don't even like hush hush puppies. They got some of the best hush puppies in the world at this restaurant. That pier, we used to jump off that pier and walk. Damn. And this dude's a tourist, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, this pier, I know exactly where that's at. Right. Oh, yeah. That's and, uh, like some fun. Said them yeah, yeah. Nut, but you've seen the sign. Like, you know what I'm saying? We thought it was a joke. See, see how they're walking in the water? The boat is just barely off the, the boat is just barely off the ground. I'm, I'm going to run it back. Just, just, look, just a piece. Because, like, it's a boat, so you would think the water deep, but it's not. Like, it's... Let me go back. See him. Uh, I see him standing there. Yeah. yeah, like you, 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 you would get sandbarred in this lake, you know. But um, this gator's in there, but you can walk across there, you know. So when I talk about gator hunting, or or the first time I had gator was at this lake right here. Uh, and it, man, so I got it. My first time I had it was fried. No bullshit. It, it, it tastes like a mix between frog legs and chicken. Okay, okay. I love frog legs. Yeah, I, so gator is better than frog legs. The meat is better. It's more tender. Mm. Uh, and then uh, so the second time I had it, it was grilled. And they had a, uh, with a Creole, like a horseradish um, Creole sauce. And I had that right. in Goldsboro, North Carolina. At, um, at this place called. But yeah, uh, when, when it's grilled, I need a sauce. When it's fried, I just put some hot sauce on there and call it good. Uh, by the way, my favorite hot sauce is Texas Pete, y'all. Just so y'all know. And Texas Pete is made in North Carolina, by the way. Texas Pete, uh, yeah, I mess with that Texas Pete. That hotter than hot, the Texas Pete hotter than hot. I think yeah. that's like the hot block. Yeah. <laughs> It'll mess you up, man. I'm better respect yeah, but, it. But I'm I'm big on I'm big on Carolina, man. Like, you know, so I don't live there anymore, but like like you know what I'm saying? Everywhere I go, I rep, I rep Carolina's at the fullest, man. Like it, it made me who I am. Uh when when Kevin Gates made that song, get it out of the mud, he don't understand. Like you see them trees and stuff. Like when I used to play basketball, I was state champion, and I never played on a hard world floor until I made the school team. Mm. Like we played in the mud, and like you had to be so strong that when you dribble the basketball, even when it's like muddy or soft ground, the ball gonna come back up. You know, or when you dunk, when you dunk, when you jumping out of dirt and mud and sand, when you jump out there and you can dunk the basketball on the 10 foot rim, 
and then you go on a, a hardwood floor that's spring loaded. Man, Ooh, come on. That grill. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I'm jumping off a solid surface now. And so, like, when I got to when I got to school age and I could make the school team, man, it was it was not even a question. And everybody where I'm from was like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that hurt us as far as getting athletic scholarships, because you could go to a court where I'm from and throw a rock and hit somebody that was super athletic because we were just raised in mud. Right. You know. Oh, let me let me read some of these comments. So uh Supreme. So uh Melvin Brown, hard at us. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, Jeff said the tail is really good. The ribs and legs can be fishy flavor. Yeah, and the jaw. The jaw can be the jaw. I don't like the jaw either. That's real fatty. Mm. We move. Salute. Salute. And Solo said he had Gator for the first time in Agtown, Texas. How, how did you like it there, though? Because the Gator I had in Texas, believe it or not, there are so many gators in North Carolina that if you go to South Carolina to Alligator Adventure, they'll tell you most of those gators came from North Carolina, from this lake right here. Mm. Um, and then there's another lake called Jones Lake. Oh man, I gotta tell y'all some, some stuff, man. Hey, I'm 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 really from I really like that. And I was really active in my community before I left. So there's two lakes in North Carolina. There's two lakes in uh where I'm from in the county. Right. Real, real lakes. This, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me down again. Real lakes. So the first lake is Jones Lake. Growing up, Jones Lake is a tea colored lake. That's literally what it said. I'm gonna show you all. I'm gonna put it on the screen. Jones Lake is a tea colored lake, and you would go there and you see a lot of people of African American descent there. And then White Lake is a crystal clear lake with a with a beach called Crystal Beach. And White Lake was a touristy one. And you see more of our Caucasian brothers go there. I went to both of these motherfuckers and enjoyed both of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, so uh, but it was so White Lake is where if I had a girl I was going on a date to the lake to get a cabin, I'm going to White Lake. Jones Lake, where I'm going, we're gonna have a family reunion. You know what I'm saying? Like that if that put it in perspective for you. Michael Clay shouts out to you, fam. Shouts out to you. Yeah, man, we just kicking it, bro. Hey, so um, look, if y'all had the Red Bull Jocko dogs, then what, 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 what everybody else had out there in that area? So you had, so where I'm from, you got Mountain Man, so you got the Homer stuff, the Rascal stuff out, out west. And in the western portion of the state, you did have other stuff. Just where I'm from, in the, in the heavy uh, Lumbee, uh, Buckhead Indian, uh, we had all of us ran Red Boy Jocko, Red Boy Jeep stuff in my little okay. in my little southeastern corner. Um, even when I went up north to Goldsboro, they had other stuff. And also, man, I want to can I, can I plug something there? A shameless plug, real quick. Uh, Spring. Oh yeah. So, and, and they don't kill me for this, but I don't care. I, I, they're my niggas, man. So the twins, I called them Saturday to clear up the air for anything that went down between myself and what went down because they were supposed to host the show. So I called the twins to talk to them because um, it took how I'm going to sit here and preach a difference if I'm doing the same shit everybody else doing. Right. So I called them and talk. We got, we got, we got, I'm not going to tell you what we talked about, but like we're good. Like You might even see them on Wednesday night show. We're good. You feel me? Mm. But the thing that I did like was we got rap and he said, he watched Saturday night show. He said, I heard you mention Goldsboro. And so on, on that show, he was like, I was in Goldsboro, and I'm like, I know, y'all see the kids scenario. And he said a last name. Remember how we was just talking about how last names are important? Right. He said he knew some Suttons. No, he said right. he knew some Wootens. He knew some Wootens. So there's two names in Goldsboro. If, you know, if, you, if you're from Goldsboro, North Carolina, or you, you was in the hood in Goldsboro, you know these two names. He knew the Suttons. Wooten, W O O T E N. Yeah, that's a that's a big name in Goldsboro, a huge name. I think I think my homie he a chef. I think his people from out there, he live out yeah. there. So I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna tell you how close how close this is. So when he said he knew the Suttons, I said, okay, do you know any Wootens? He said, yeah. I said, okay, well, Mrs. Betty Sutton, who this is this was my my son's nanny when I stayed there. Okay, she married a Wooten. So she's both of those families tied together. 
this lady, I used to have to work long hours, and, uh, and my son used to say overtime at daycare. It's illegal to keep a child for more than 10 hours in the state of North Carolina at a daycare, right? So what she would do is she would just take my son to her house and take him to church for her until I can get off work. She ran one like one of one of them house churches or whatever. And so okay. um, like when I say I fuck with the Wootens and the Suttons hard, man, like them good people. You know, there's a reason why their names carry weight in that area. And uh, that's my personal experience with them. Uh now mind you, when I be advocating, I'm talking, I said a specific name, Mrs. Betty Wooten. Because some of her grandsons are just like some of our grandsons, some of our cousins, they some knuckleheads too. You understand what I'm saying? Like the, the last names are losing weight because they're people aren't living up to the name is put on. That's just like you go buy a red boy Jocko dog and it ain't game. It's not living up to the name that you put on it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I ain't never owned no red boy Jocko dog, man. It seemed uh, seem like that. Seemed like that's what's popping though over there. I see. I mean, I see people standing from behind, so I, I never question it. You know, this is the thing, bro. Let me say this, and I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you have the mic back. The way you have your dog in your house right now, and the way I have my dog chilling right now, none of my red boy dog dogs was, was chilling enough for that. For me, none of them. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that says a lot. Said they was turned up. Said none of that. They need to be separated. Yeah, man. Y'all ain't uh. Did nobody have no? So if y'all y'all had the red boy. And then, I, and then I had the red boy Jocko, and then they might have had the homer. They had no Eli, yeah. like no Buddha. So people had it, but I'm not gonna lie. Like when when I say like Frisco, even, even Tom stuff, Frisco, the Frisco Eli stuff didn't get the love around me where I was at, like 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 it does now. And I, you know, so I was one of those people who I was one of those people who didn't. Uh, who didn't believe in it because I was taught not to believe in it. And this is why I tell you, like, bro, like, Brother Jeff, uh, Brother Eli, uh, any of my old heads, you have to be careful what you say for influence because I lived by the fact that no other. To me, if it wasn't Rebo Jocko, it wasn't even Real Pit growing up. That's how I thought in my earlier years. You know what I'm saying? Like, Rebo Jocko is, was the standard to me. Um, and so after I learned that, okay, these, some of these Rebo Jocko dogs get stopped by some of this other blood. That's when I was like, okay, like, you know, I need to open up my, my eyes and see what I like. Right. And it right, came out yeah. to me that the Chinaman Frisco dogs, for my personality, for the things I naturally like to do, they just naturally work better for me. Okay. Okay. I ain't gonna lie. When I was younger, I was Kendall Blind. I ain't want nothing but Kobe dogs. Yeah. When I was younger. So I, I was able to get a couple of them, and I had one. I had one that turned out to be like the best one. He was a big, big, humongous Kobe dog. And then I ended up playing with like some old family red nose dogs. And they was cool. And my next door neighbor, they had my next door neighbor, they was they was in it. That's why I said I ain't never known about no kennels. Because yeah. my next door neighbor in Memphis, he had Frisco Gator dogs, and they was all black, black and white. And there was some monsters. We had a kennel accident back in the day. They had a dog named KJ. Uh, he was a beautiful dog. He had KJ behind the garage. Now, this is Memphis. You got big, big, big backyard. So he had yeah. KJ behind the garage, but the garage was in the backyard. So you couldn't really see KJ. And I had I had this dog named Chico, this big, like, I want to say 55-pound Bruno Kobe dog. And then... Boom, y'all accident happened. My dog tried to go underneath the gate, and then KJ grabbed him by the paw, and then he ended up getting up underneath the gate and over over there, and it was just blood there. Well, and I think after that, I started messing with like some scatterbread stuff. I came back to Chicago. I had we had like a Jeep Red Boy Turtle Buster Bolio dog. Now I ain't gonna most people call that scatterbread, but they was just some nice, decent dogs and pets. Ended up having to get rid of them. Then I got a midnight cowboy dog. This dog was this 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 was made me mess with Eli dogs. <laughs> so the midnight cowboy dog, she was midnight cowboy on top, niggerino on the bottom, and she ain't had no paperwork. The guy I got her from, 
he had you ever heard of uh till does bruno yeah so he had a whole lot of direct offspring off of till does bruno's cut 50 50 till does bruno and, and yellow man through that bam bam stuff so he had to get rid of the dog because like it was just causing too much chaos so i took it and I, I still had them Red Boy Jocko dogs. I mean, not, not Red Boy Jocko. I still had them Jeep Red Boy Turtle Bucks the Bolio dogs. And they was males. So I had to put that dog outside. And I, the dogs wouldn't even go near her. Yeah, she, she messed them up, messed them up real bad. I had to put them in the house. I tried to sell her. The guy who was going to come sell her, he had brought a dog over there. That dog ended up getting loose on accident. She messed that dog up. I had to end up keeping the dog for him for like I want to say like three weeks just to heal the dog up because he couldn't take it back home. And he tell you a funny story, right? <clears throat> so I had a girlfriend at the time. She put that dog in her trunk. You hear me? Drove yeah. that dog to Inglewood, <laughs> opened the trunk, and let the dog loose. I seen you post that one in the chats one night, I think. Bro, when I say I show my ass for no reason, I'm talking about I got my other dogs, I got my little cousin with me. I'm strapped up, he's strapped up, we going yard to yard. I'm talking about we we own it. She helping yeah. us look for the dog. You feel me? <laughs> I I end up finding out about it some years later. I told her as you owe me, you owe me. I ain't paying up but like 350 for the dog at the time. But yeah. So anyway, I ended up getting out of dogs for a little while. I moved to Memphis, and then that's when I got this dog. You know. So and then was the 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 moral of that story is I was never able to keep my dogs. You know, yeah. out of all the dogs I had, I was never stable enough to keep the dogs, or never focused enough to keep the dogs. And at the age thirty four, I'm finally focused enough to you know keep the dogs so it's been a long road long ass road bro that's crazy and you know what's crazy when you said you had the kobe dogs where i'm from i think kobe dogs were men like i knew they existed but i didn't think they had them and i had enough percentage to call it kobe dogs anymore mm. so i that i probably would have because like that you know red boys red, red boys is in the kobe dogs like that that wouldn't have been too far off for me you know no. um, Another another group of dogs that I really uh, like a lot with the Lopase dogs, you know. Uh, so that was that, that was that was also current uh, constant in my area, and Snooty dogs were as well, you know. Right. But see, we after I, what's up? they see, I, I I think most of the people in my neighborhood they had some old fan of red nose dogs. Everybody had a red nose dog except for me. This was like this was like 2002, 2003. So we like teenagers. So we we in the backyard, front yard, side of the house, middle of the street, just letting them get their roll on. But yeah, I wish I, I wish I could have grew up around like a you know a little bit more established people with a little more established counts. I probably would have had more dogs by now. We're gone here. I ain't mean to cut you off. Nah, bro. Like Cook and Melvin Brown actually gave you a shot. He said you're growing supreme. Stay positive. Thanks for young man. Salute. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, so Supreme, let me ask you some stuff, man. Um, when you when you're picking a puppy, right? Um, let's say there is no paperwork involved. You're just picking a puppy. Uh, what do you look for? Like if you're if you're if you get a chance to be around, like let's say your, your homeboy got a litter, what are you looking for? What characteristics are you looking for? Um now, now with the knowledge, with the little bit of knowledge that I got now, because I you know I I ain't I ain't a miss to know it all. It depend on I'm a, it depend on my situation. If I'm gonna have the dog on the inside, or if I got something set up for the outside, let's say I got a kennel set up for the outside, then I might go for the one that comes straight to me. But if um if I know this dog to be on the inside, then I might just pick the one that's minding this business, just yeah. shove them. You know, I most people would wanna. Most people would want the one that's, you know, pretty much wrecking shop. But shit, that motherfucker, do you really do you really feel like messing dealing with it though when he get older? You know? Yeah. So um, I really can I share a story? 
I'll go ahead. So it's, the reason I asked that question was I learned this from my, one of my OGs. Um, and Pimps over some season here too. He, he uh, my cousin, he was with me. I introduced him to this OG. Um, he said he would take a blanket if he had access to the puppies. He would take a blanket, put the puppies down the middle of the floor, throw a blank, throw a blanket over the puppies, and see which one came out first. Okay. Yeah. Then he would put them back in the middle of the floor and put a blanket over them again, and see which one came out first. And basically, he would see which puppy learned to just beeline and out of trouble. That puppy was learning the fastest. Oh, okay. him, that, that puppy, that puppy was identifying was was a problem solving puppy, and that's how he would mm. he would pick the puppies. And so, like a lot of these old school cats, man, they got tricks that even when they piss me off, and I get mad at all of them. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm like, nah, I can't fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't fuck with them. These motherfuckers, they 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 know things. A Dicky Foster yeah. salute. Salute, Dicky. You know what I was gonna do? When I bred Faith, I was gonna set up a puppy cam, do like a live puppy cam, so that people yeah. could watch the puppies, like other people, and they, you know, put some collars on them, and they could, you know, be like, man, this one was doing this today, because I'm gonna be at work. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna save my two week vacation, but yeah. I'm gonna end up being at work anyway. And yeah, because I, I, ain't, I, that's crazy. He said that he threw the blanket and the one that beeline that I would have never thought of nothing like that. Yeah. He was just seeing which one could solve a problem. Which one, which one was because you know the scary ones, they're gonna stay under the blanket and whine and whine for help. Mm. You know, the the ones that they did their betas, they're gonna wiggle around and eventually figure it out. But that alpha, he's gonna say, Yep, all I gotta do is do this. Figure it right. out. Next problem. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I was like, okay, like once he explained it to me, he made it made it make sense. Uh he uh, that makes sense to me. Hey, Michael Clay said a uh, red boy jockey top, tombstone bully or bottom, same yard since '98. What's your favorite pedigree? What you got, Supreme? What you want? What you got for our favorite pedigree? Favorite pedigree on any dog? Yeah. Mm. I'm about to say I'm I'm about to say uh, DC Lines Connection Arpeggio. That's my favorite pedigree right now. That 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 that, that, that Clarence blood, that Fabio Bolero blood. I like how that's. I like how that is. So let me see if I can find a champion, Kyle Leon. I haven't been able to find it since, man. It was a. Uh, it was man some pit bull channels that, that fell off, but um, Kyle Leon was a casino dog, man. You know, some of that blackjack two stuff. And the reason why I like Kyle Leon was he didn't look like a pit bull. Well, he looked like a, if you know what pit bulls are, he looked like a pit bull. But like he didn't look like he wasn't the phenotype for a pit bull. He was a long, rangy black dog with the fat ears. You know what I'm saying? But they said he could bite like you know, like no like nobody's business. And honestly, mm -hmm. uh, looking back on it now, if I could have a yard full of dogs like that, that that people just didn't even identify as pit bulls, that's what I would take. You know what I'm saying? Like like seriously, uh, it was it's the killer. Oh, he read the Kylie on story. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that's the personal preference. I, I can't tell you how he was bred because uh, honestly, that dog that dog moved hands a lot. And even how Casino says he's bred may not be true. But that, those actions of a Kylie on dog, and I just know it's casino blood, man. So if you if you want to look at Casino's dogs, uh Casino had the um the blood the black the, the blackjack two stuff. Yeah, because black blackjack was tall and range, wasn't it? Yeah, he was. So Kylie only like blackjack with, with bad ears. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, like Kylie only like blackjack with bad ears. And um, I my Hendrix. Yeah, Go ahead. That my a nice one. Uh, I got to get some shout outs real quick, bro. Uh, OTK Outlaw Texas Kindles in the building. Salute. Yeah, sir. They said uh, that's been. That's great. I've been hearing about that Valero. Oh, he's talking about what you said about the Valero stuff. Mm. Yeah, man. I ain't gonna lie. When it, you know, I, you, how can I put it? I'm gonna just be honest. You know, you, I, Fabio, like my favorite dog, man. You know. Yeah. So, and then uh, the opportunity I had to, you know, be cool with him. You know, learn from what I learned from, him. and then Breeze was a good dog. You know, it's like I got an opportunity to. 
not only continue his bloodline, but you know, create my own in the process. And I feel like that's that's I feel like that's cool. I you know, I can live with that. That's that's I feel like cause that was my only vice. I, I was telling my old lady this yesterday. She asked me how many dogs you plan on having. As many as I can. <laughs> <laughs> So originally we was just supposed to keep a boy, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, we need two of them. And then I was gonna gift the rest out. You know, I I, I really wasn't into selling dogs. I might sell one or two, you know, buy my girl something nice, but I just want to Yeah. Do. I'm gonna have to get schoolboy back on here. Uh he's probably asleep right now, but I'm gonna have to get schoolboy back on here to talk about Kylie Home man. Uh Cause I, I I I want people to know about it. Don't no, like this is one of the, this is one of those things where where people just uh, they don't know. But um, to answer the brother's question in its entirety, if kind of a name, it's not a line, right? Nobody's breathing anymore. Um, if I had to pick the the cross or the the dogs that I would use, it would be Mims, Jeep, or Mims, Jigs, and Ritz, either or. It's, it's it's basically his red boy Jocko Snooty stuff, right? And I will put that on top of I will put that on top of uh, a Frisco Chinaman dog. Both of them can bite. Both of, like they they are to me superior superior athletes. You know, if I'm going in and um, superior. Do you know the story about a grand champion, a triple grand champion Ritz? No, I didn't hear about that one. He was so, he said triple. You said triple. triple, triple grand champion Ritz. Jesus Christ! And this is where this is where I'm about to piss some people off. I don't care because okay, it, it could just be a good story, or it could be you could know about it. And the last time I mentioned it, I think I mentioned it in a Going Hard's chat, and a brother from New York had heard the same story. And I'm like, how are you from one of the boroughs in New York, and I'm from the country, and we heard the same story? Oh uh, yeah. And this this so, this this before this before social media. This is just straight word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. Okay, so uh, Carl Mims had a dog named Ritz, and I'm I'm probably about to mess up the bloodline. I'm probably about to mess up the breedings, but I'll I'll pull it up while we're talking about it. All right. Right. So Mims Ritz came off. I think Dopey and Polly. Okay, Dopey is the commonality for these bloods that I'm talking about. Mims. Ritz, and I'm gonna pull up the pedigree. So Ritz came off, I think, uh, Dopey and Polly, and then I think one of them came off a uh, uh, Dopey and Little Amber. M- uh, Ritz and Jigs is half brothers, half, half brothers. Okay. So, okay. yeah. So uh, uh, Ritz is Dopey Polly. I'm about to put it up on the screen so y'all can so y'all can see that while I tell y'all a story. Also, the dog. This is one of the things my OG taught me. The dog in this picture is not the real Ritz. Okay, like it's just a dog. All right. Okay. Just, I didn't load this pedigree to do online pedigrees. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me know where y'all can see it. You can see it. Okay. So you see the coloration on this dog right here? Uh huh. All right. Yesterday I was telling y'all those Ritz dog, those Mims dogs, they were chocolate. Okay. They look more like the Marlowe dogs. But what happened is they, they would get sun bleach. Now this dog right here is the color and then. And, Looks like Ritz, but it's not built like Ritz. Ritz was a, a taller, rangier dog, and I and I, I had the personal privilege to touch one of Ritz's sons. Okay, now mind you, this name his name is blacked out, so they don't they didn't record any of his stuff. But if you look at Mims Dope and Mims Ali, this is Ritz. Now he he had a half brother named Jigs that was off a of Dopey to Little Amber. Mims Dopey to Mims Little Amber that could that was said they've been able to bite just as hard. Okay, right. now. This story I share is why, like, I don't care what nobody say. They can say I be, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm kennel blind. I don't care what you say. I've seen one of these dogs bite before. I didn't see right. Ritz go, but I'm gonna just tell you the story. Okay, so this is what was told no, you me. Gotta be, you gotta be kennel blind, man. Because if you, if you the same, if you the same what these dogs can do with your own eyes, then that mean you believe in the dogs. Yeah, can't nobody can't nobody change your mind. That means you really believe in the dogs, and you stand on what you believe in. So, uh, thank you. So, uh, Ritz 
was born to Dopey and Polly. I can't give you the time frames. All I know is I heard these words on the phone with Mr. Mims. Okay. Right. Like I'm standing in my backyard with my cousin and he, him and him and Carl are, were friends. He called him. He said, Carl, I want you to I want you to tell him what you told me about Ritz. This is a this this conversation happened. Christmas Eve, 2000 and this would have been 2008. Christmas Eve, 2008. I know because my Jigs dog I had at that time, her name was Psycho. You know what I'm saying? And um, I remember that winter. Uh, I told y'all the story about the uh, about the van and being out there the winter. And when President Obama got a got uh, did his inauguration speech, it was it was snowing in North Carolina, and I st- and I and I remember bringing that dog inside. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I didn't want her. To, I didn't want her to get. I, I I was taking care of that dog. But anyways, the story that was told to me about Ritz was that. Rich was raised and at it was an early starter, so like maybe maybe it was twelve months or fourteen months. It doesn't matter. He he started early and he was killing other dogs on the yard. Okay, mm. so there was no reason to roll him because he was he was already a finisher. Now, when they started matching him, what made Rich so impressive was that he caught you in your pastures. And for those of you who don't know pastures, it's like the wrist part of a dog or in the hocks, the lower portions of the legs. He was snapping them shits off like chicken bones. Hmm. You know, like in the box, like parts of the dog are flying out of the box. Ooh. So he went out then 15 the, times. What's up? This the wrist dog you talking about? Yeah. Now, some of these might have been OTCs, which is another reason why they might not have been reported. But he went out 15 times. All 15 opponents did. All 15 opponents did. The last three opponents, his teeth were gone. Or you know, like his his hangers and, and cutters were were worn down. I'm not gonna say they were fully gone, but he he was he didn't have the same amount of slice that he did when he started out. Yeah. Okay, so and this is where the story of risk is is goes down. And this anybody who's heard the story will tell you the same thing. Ritz didn't die in a kennel accident. Ritz didn't die old age. He was at the damn vet clinic. They told him they said, "Hey, do not." Come in here when you come to do the vaccinations. Don't come in here with no towel or anything to wipe the dog up. My, I train my dog to buy the towels. The veterinarian comes in and has the towel wrapped on his arm to do the vaccination. Ritz sees the towel, bites the towel, breaks the vet's arm. They put Ritz down. Damn. And that is the story of a three-time a triple grand champion. Damn. You said you touched his offspring, though. You got a chance. Yes. And so... When I his offspring, my dogs are powerful. Okay, my dogs are powerful. But I've never we were sitting. I, I can't make this shit up. I was sitting on my cousin's on my cousin's picnic table in his backyard, and he said, "I'm gonna let this dog out. Just don't move. When he come out, just don't move." Okay, he said, "Don't move. I'm not fucking moving." Because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not moving. You know what I mean? I'm not moving. So he let him out. Right. And when I tell you. Like the, I don't know if you ever had like a horse, like a parade or something, a horse ride past you. But the force, like you can feel like, like okay, like if you're in, if you're if you're somewhere, you can feel the ground, like you know, like almost Jurassic Park is an exaggeration, but like you know, like when a T Rex like hit the ground, like the lower water be shaking or whatever. Oh, okay, like, yeah. like you can feel that something big is coming. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how much force. Yeah. Just the dog this is a yes, this is a forty-five pound dog with that much force. This is like, this, this, this the sign of uh, a risk. Yes, yes. Ooh. And I'm like, you got like, my cousin had a yard of thirty dogs. Not one of those dogs when I walked past their chain spot did I feel this. Rich was his house dog. Morning, brother Eli. Rich was his house dog. This dog ran past me. I'm sitting on a picnic table, and it sound, it sounded and felt like a full grown quarter horse ran by me. You know, and like that's what it sounded like when he was fucking running around the yard. Mm-hmm. And then my cousin had him trained. He could whatever he pointed at, he would he would grab. It. And so he there's a tree called a mimosa tree. If you've ever been to Carolina, you've seen them in the spring. They uh they look like they shut off Lion King, but they got these pretty these pretty pink flowers. In the summertime, they bloom these mimosa trees. 
Oh, okay. okay, okay. They're they almost like rubber. The trees that they're really they're really flexible. He would pull the limb down on the instead of getting a spring ball, he would pull the limb down on the most tree, and the dog would grab the grab the limb and just be sitting there shaking on the most tree. Mm. We were having a full blown conversation, and this dog was just sitting there shaking under the most tree the whole time. Like oh, yeah. when I when I when I think about where I want my kennel to go, I know my cousin has been breeding those dogs for over 45 years now. That's the direction I want to go. And like I said, he doesn't match dogs. At all. I don't know if he – I can't tell you the last time he matched a dog. His dogs proved themselves just being dog. They are such hard riders that they start killing their siblings, and that's when he separates them, and he they get a, they earn a chain spot. No illegal activity. They're just being – like how you said, they're just being real bulldog. Yeah, they're just doing what they do. Ain't nobody making them do this. I don't know no other dog that got this drive. Maybe some hunt dogs. I take that back. I seen the Pata del Terrier for for first time in my eyes do some damage to a, a larger animal. And I was I was I was yeah. impressed. I was impressed. But them yeah, is tenacity. To me, those Patterdales and those Jack Terriers, that's tenacity. But this was power. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like so like a, a how you put it, like Pacquiao, he was hit. But I promise you, he wasn't hit like Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, that's the no, kind of bite force that these them, them, them Mims dogs be having, man. Man, so yeah, I think I had a chance to buy a Mims dog from a guy in Ohio. I had he showed that was that that would have been the first paper dog I would have ever owned in my life. It was a down in Ohio, it was a Mims dog. She was like a light, light bus skin, and it was all white in the chest and it came all the way up her head. She had a black nose. He, I think he wanted like seven hundred dollars for. I don't know why I ain't get that dog. I don't know why I ain't get that dog. I should have got that damn dog. It was a male's female. Well, I'm about to pull up jigs for you now. It was Lily. I told you wrong. Now I think this pedigree is wrong because I knew the dogs. I'm pretty sure it was Mims. You just, I think this pedigree is wrong. Mims little Amber bred to Dopey made jigs, and it's crazy right. that it's crazy that because you know I'm not. I don't know a lot about dogs, but I know these dogs. I know Jigs is because I, I had the paper pedigree from the BFKC, and the BFKC is owned by Carl Mims. You get what I'm saying? So, like, whoever posted this right here, because I personally saw this pedigree, this is one of the first one I've never told somebody a pedigree was wrong on all my pets, except this one. Mm. Because my dog was a granddaughter of Jigs, not Rick's. And I was proud to have this is how this is how you go a bloodline is fired. Even though I didn't have something directly off Ritz, because I had something off of his litter mate or his, uh, his excuse me, his, uh, his half sibling, I was just as proud as if I had a Ritz stall. That's how you know you got a quality product. Right. I'm like, this dog is a distant cousin of Ritz, and I'm happy. Mm. And she had all the you, traits. Let me ask you a question Is it such thing as all black, all black, pure red boy dog? Oh, you hear? That's my wife knocking, but my dogs, they, 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 don't, they don't go. Let me let her in, bro. I'll be right back. Go ahead and cook. Yeah, man. I wanna... Is there a such thing as an all black, all pure red boy dog? I like the red boy dogs, just like never on them. Then they say they real loud. They say they be loud as hell. We lie. We lie. Yeah. Got my jig. Got my jig. He love the dogs. Oh yeah. I say, hey Anthony. Say hey AD. What's going on? What's on going on, Anthony? You heard him growling at the door. Yeah. So my wife, my wife here too, y'all. Uh, my wife says hey, hello, everybody. Shout out. Uh, but uh, I don't know. So I was proud. That was a proud moment right there too, Supreme. And I and I share that with you. So all this shit I do on the internet, all this stuff I be talking is about protecting my family, right? At the end of the day. And so when my dogs didn't know who she was and they started growling, that makes me proud. That's what I bred for. But you, you mm. see, she's, she's in here. My son is in here. They chilling again. I be out here drunk as fuck sometimes on live with y'all. And I'm not worried about nobody coming in this building. You hear what I'm saying? Like, that's, I'm proud of that. You feel me? Yeah. 
But uh, I'm sorry, bro. Go ahead. That's real. That's real deal. Why wouldn't you want your dog to do that? So, and then on top of your dog's gonna protect you, then you might as well give them a fair chance to know how to protect you properly. Because you know, a regular dog that loves you and and see a threat pose, ain't no telling what they're gonna bite a person. They might grab them at the bottom of the leg or something. Uh, you know, yeah. grab some clothes or something. But you train your dog right, you know, to grab that forearm. Or, you know, to go for the neck, go for the face. Give you enough time to go grab what you need to grab. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know this, but yeah. this no, samurai yeah, dog. Oh, yeah. What's like katana right beside me. Black steel katana. Hmm. Yeah, it's right right beside me, bro. But yeah, let me let me get him back to his mom real quick, so uh, Supreme, so I can actually cook with y'all, bro. <laughs> but yeah, he 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 grabbed on the daddy and, and, and went to hold on. Go ahead. Yeah, so let me some more coffee. Hold on, y'all. Maybe I'm like, oh. I want y'all to see him with his dogs. What, what, and you want to play with the dog still? Oh, shit, it's blurry. I got the damn blurry on there. But, uh, yeah, man, that boy love them dogs, man. And my kids, my baby boy, like them the most. The most. Um, but I, I just want to show y'all they stable, man. You know what I'm saying? People be like, all these dogs are uh, the monsters. You know, people are monsters. All right, spring my back, bro. My, my family gone. We could cook. Yes. How long you say you've been messing with the dogs? How old you are now? So what? I said. I said. How many years would you say you've been messing with these dogs? Um, official. My official start rising would be oh three. Like okay. I got my. I I bought my. Like I paid money to get my first dog. It was paper paperless backyard dog. But after that, I was I was yeah. hooked. You know, I got her. She was a stone cold cur. Um, her sister and <laughs> her. Her sister curved her out, uh, you know what I'm saying? And after that, I was on a mission to stop that dog, you know, to stop the dog, to stop my first dog. And so I, I spent a bunch of money to, uh, to to do that, you know, because uh, her sister was a good dog. Her sister was a good, and I never stopped her. No, I, I, let me put that out, I never stopped her, you know. My homeboy that bought the sister, um, he had an older brother that was in the dog. So he was getting some schooling, and I, and I was learning from the school of the hard knocks, you know. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I'm about to say about 20 years strong, about 21 years now. About 20 years strong. No. Yeah. And then and then when you was in the military, you still had them, but you took a break from them. Bro, that was crazy. So like uh I joined the military to get enough money to start a kennel. That was my dream. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's why I get so excited. I sound so loud and passionate because it's the truth, bro. Like, you know, I'm doing basically doing a 20 year bid where I can be deployed anywhere. Just so I can have these dogs. Like this is my life. And so uh my first year in the military, I was staying in the in the barracks and I was paying people to keep dogs in their house. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. yo, like I pay you a buck fifty a month to, to just keep my dog there. I'll drive home from work every day and feed them. Just let me keep them at your house. You know what I'm saying? Family members, I lost a lot of friends over this shit because right. it was people that I would offer them money to let me because like back where I'm from, like I'm I, I was stationed in North Carolina where I'm from. So like I know these people can have chain spots in the yard. I'm like, I'll set up the chain spot, I'll feed the dog, just let me keep it in your, at your place. So I had to, I had to, every couple of months I had to get rid of a dog and buy a new dog. I was going through dogs like crazy. And I burned a lot of relationships because I didn't have a stable place to keep my dogs at. And it was like, man, you know, you, you got rid of my dog. I'm like, bro, I, it wasn't intentional. But every, every young buck that goes through that phase of you're not stable enough to have these dogs and they lose their old hands, I'm here as a as like as like proof, like eventually you're going to get to a spot where you can keep your dogs the way you want to. And um, yeah, eventually, eventually. It, it's a long road. Yeah, it, it's not easy. You might lose, and you might lose yourself on the road. It's crazy, man. If you really love it, like how most people love it. But then, if you find yourself, then you know you go then. I know this ain't. I know this ain't. Uh, this ain't 1960 or you know 1970. I know it ain't. Tend to be you know 300 dogs. 
on 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 fifteen acres of land or nothing like that, you know. But yeah, we can manage with a couple of them. For sure. But yeah, bro, like this man, it's been therapeutic, Supreme, bro. You have no idea, man. It's been therapeutic. Uh my wife in there cooking some, some grits and some uh some grits and uh shrimp, shrimp and grits. Uh y'all brothers might not know about that, but uh that's 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 my wife is my wife will never admit it. She's Geechee, though. You know, that was one of the things that attracted me to her. And uh, do you know, are you familiar with the Geechee folk, uh, uh, Supreme? Um, I heard. Uh, is that what that's, is that New Orleans? Or? Nah, that's the Carolinas. That's uh, the, the Carol from Virginia on down to Florida. But Geechee, Geechee people are really prominent in Charleston, South Carolina. And so uh, the reason why I love it is. Um, it's a culture that people don't know about. Like, it's, like where I'm from, I come from. So, it's so backwoods. There's cultures of people that, it, yeah. And they, all these people are involved in dogs, right? Like even the Geechees, like they run dogs. Like I met a, a Geechee guy named Prentice from uh, Marion, South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? He run right. dog. And like just off the like, the dogs are a catalyst. But that's how I learned. That's how I get to meet the people. And so the Geechee folk. Basically, what it was is Charleston, South Carolina has what's called the Hot Gates. But when the when the triangular trade, the slave trade would come in or whatever, you know what I'm saying, that's where they would would, would disembark their their uh the people. And mm -hmm. so what happened was the Geechee folk, they moved off into the island because there's islands off the coast of North and South Carolina, just like Jamaica, just like Dominican Republic. There's islands, there's barrier islands. And one of those islands is known as Hilton Head. And it's it's heavy Geechee influence down that way, you know, and uh even even uh that's that's Highland or Lowland Geechee, the the, the the water folk and then you're Highland Geechee. Anyways, the Geechee folks uh, created their own communities and they have their own talk, you know, Gullah Geechee talk. And there was even a show. It was it was getting popular back in the 90s. It was a show called Gullah Gullah Island. It's based on the Gullah Geechee people. And mm, okay. if you if you ever if you ever go there and talk to them, it almost sounds like they speak in Patois, like Jamaicans. But it's it's just the, the, the Geechee talk. Damn. Yeah. It's a whole group. Mm -hmm. And like you go to Williamsburg, yeah, yeah. You know, like and look them up. You know, what I'm saying, like, look them up. The Gullah Geechee folk, and like, even like the Lumbees and the Walkamas, who like nobody talks about this. So, like, when I when I see kennels with these names and stuff, I'm like, bro, like, do you know? Do you know what you're? Even when I call myself Samurai Kennel, the only reason why I picked Samurai Kennel, I wasn't called a Black Samurai Kennel, but I thought, I was like, no, the Samurai believed that to be a true Samurai. You had to have an ounce of black blood. Look it up. Look it up. Mm. And I'll even give you the name. The first shogun to say this, his name was Saka no Ye no Tamaru Maru. Shogunare. Saka no Ye. Saka no Ye. Okay. Saka, yep. No Tamaru Maru. And they were saying that uh that made you that made you fearless in battle. You know, and I, whether that's true or not, I look at it. I look at the red boy, the red boy blood like that in dogs. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it ain't got an ounce of red boy in it, man, hey, you know, hey, that's the personal opinion. This is it's all opinion based. You know, like, and, and I got and I, and I have to disclaim everything by saying it's, it's my opinion. If you don't like my opinion, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. I'm fine with it. I can I can agree to be disagreeable. You know, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if if it works for me, it works for me. And if it don't work for you, it don't work for you. Man, I told myself I was gonna. I told myself if it was possible, I love Eli so much that I cross it every in which way I could to the point where I have a twenty five percent out of everything in the Eli dog, whether it be Red Boy, yeah, whether it be got that. Oh, I already got a twenty five percent out of uh old old family Red Nose in her, so I'm like, man, yeah, I, I, like everything deserves out, goddamn it. Hey, uh, Supreme Brother Melvin has a good a good question, and and it's not to discredit anybody else in the chat because y'all was going y'all was going in. Melvin said, "What's the smartest bloodline? Not saying game, but companion that's laid back." I ain't gonna lie. When I had that red boy, when I had that red boy G Turtle Buster stuff. That was some, that was a, that was a that was a good laid back. I don't know. 
I really can't put it on the bloodline. I damn this ain't a dog because shit. Yeah. Who knows? Somebody somebody could have a real boy Jocko dog out of the litter that was so reckless and destroying, but this one dog is in the house chilling. You know, okay. so, so, uh, so Supreme, I, I gotta I gotta hit y'all with it. And y'all know if you if you rock me, y'all know who I preach on the most. Or and I or I'll, or I'll clarify it. Frisco. Frisco, and mind you, this is not box. Let's go back to smarts now. Everybody knows Bolio dogs because they're a smart dog, right? But even what I run now, the Frisco Chinaman stuff with the Jeep Rest Red Boy on top, the commonality there is Frisco. Because before it was Chinaman, Maverick, and Midnight Cowboy shit that I was running from out, out in Lumbees. And the common blood was the Frisco blood. And all of them dogs have been like this. They chill in the house. But will but will attack a stranger, and that's from two different breeders from two different states. You, you get what I'm saying? Like th- these guys were breeding the same lines from two different states, and that line is consistent. Right. You know, so you got Tom up in North Carolina, and then uh, the Joe Whittle stuff, and the Bruce Bark stuff down in Texas, and it work. It works the same. It, literally, it's like it's like if you go drive a Honda Civic from any state, it's still a Honda Civic. It's very consistent. Yeah. Mm. Brother Eli said he wants some strip trimmer grips, but his wife's slipping. Oh. <laughs> Eli, we're gonna tell you something, <laughs> man. I don't know if you I don't know if she listens to these podcasts, reads these comments, man. But uh you know what? You're a grown man, you got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah, man. But um I'm about to let these dogs out to the bathroom real quick, bro, and get them off of here, fam. Uh, oh, yeah. these, these, this was dope, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is cool, man. Like, I, I keep with y'all because, especially on the days when I'm off and I and I don't have nothing going on my schedule. Like, my family just starting wow. to stir. It's it's seven o'clock. They just starting to stir. You know, I've been up since three forty one, and I po- I posted this morning on purpose at three forty one just to let y'all know it wasn't no bullshit. And I think that's what I'm gonna start doing is a rise and grind. Uh, message on, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday when I get up, just so that those of y'all who are up, if I decide to go live or when I'm walking Saki, if I just want to go live and just let y'all like be with me on the walk and we chop it up, man, we can do some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's therapeutic, man. That's what yeah. it's all about. For sure, for sure, man. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, man. For sure. You as well. Hey, do, 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 you, do you get on the, uh, do you get on the sticks? Nah, nah. It, it's been about some years. Been some years. All good, bro. Yeah. All good. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I be playing that Call of Duty in that Fortnite, man. I be inviting anybody out that want to rock with us. I know Soul that he getting on there. If if Grand Theft Auto Six come back, if, if Grand Theft Auto Six come out, yeah, I go buy a console. I go buy a console. For sure, for sure, man. Sure. Hey, man, y'all brother, be safe, man. Stay dangerous. Uh, this is this is a good this is a good cook up, bro. To bring you more than welcome to come back anytime, my brother. Um, any of y'all members, non-members, man, like when, you, when we do these impromptu lives, man, this simply, I had something on my chest for the first 30 minutes that I wanted to get off, and then Supreme and I just got to cooking, bro. And that's how we do it, man. Oh, Ken, I'll be on a little bit, bro. 100. All right.